Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about feline nutrition. I've kind of been ignoring our feline friends, so we're going to uh, take, a, take a look at cat foods. So uh, actually, we'll even do a comparison. I haven't done too many comparisons, but I think uh, today will make a lot of sense to do that. When you're looking for a diet for your cat, what is it you're looking for? Now, I could be totally wrong here, but I know cats are pretty finicky and tough to satisfy. So I gotta believe one of the first things that you judge a food on is taste, how well the cat likes it. And let's face it, all of us, you know, we love the idea when we put that food down, that, that food bowl, uh, that the cat or dog comes running. We love that, that's what we want. So we want them to enjoy their food. So I'm gonna assume that taste is way up on your list of, of what they, uh, what you're looking for. Second is, I'm thinking maybe uh, that they maintain a nice uh, weight, a nice healthy weight on the food. Not uh, getting too heavy, not getting thin, but that they seem to look fine and they eat it well and that's important to you. Uh, I would imagine skin and coat. I mean, let's face it, everybody I hear looking at on uh, the web pages and stuff that, uh, you know, my, my dog just, or my, I'm sorry, my cat, got to switch gears here. Uh, my cat really just uh, does really well on that diet. She maintains weight. Her skin uh, is nice and healthy. Her coat is just gorgeous. Okay, that's how we judge how good that food is. Uh, another one that I think would be big, at least be big on my list, is the litter box. Uh, am I scooping up tons of poop all the time or is there a nice firm stool and less of it because of this food that I'm feeding? So that would be another thing I'd be looking at. I tried to think what are the other things if I was a cat person that I'd be looking for and uh, those are the, the big ones that I think we, we see. We can actually watch. The cat likes to eat it. She looks great. Her coat is beautiful. The litter box isn't bad. Um, that's pretty good. But what besides that are you willing to or, or wanting from your cat food that it can deliver? One, I think, is maintaining overall health. We know there's certain uh, health issues that go from kittenhood on into adulthood and then even into senior uh, cathood. Is that a word, cathood? Um, but those senior years, uh, thank goodness, have actually, that's the life stage for a cat that has become the longest life stage. They're a kitten for a year. They're an adult till about six or seven, but man, cats are living so much longer now because of veterinary medicine and nutrition science and parasite control, all that great stuff. Um, so now that that senior life stage, not only is it the most critical that we'll talk about, but it actually uh, is the longest. So we're gonna talk about that. So maintaining their health, I want a food that does that. And also I think the, the other part of that is how can my food help reduce the risk of certain diseases, especially as my cat ages? Uh, think about it, you're, if your cat owner is watching this, you worry about urinary stones, you know, crystals and urinary stones, uh, renal disease or kidney disease, very common in cats, especially when they get into that later stage of life. If you've got three or four cats at home and they're getting older, um, I would say it's not even a question of if you're gonna deal with kidney disease, it's, it's more a question of when. Uh, genetics plays a lot into it, we'll talk about that. Um, some cats are just not gonna be prone to stones even if they're on the worst cat food out there. Uh, other cats are never gonna have kidney disease even though uh, they're eating the, the cheapest dry food uh, available. Uh, genetics has a lot to do with it. But that's the key, those key things we should be looking at in feline nutrition. And my question would be with those last two, um, how does the food maintain my cat's health and how does it reduce the risk of disease? Does it, is that its focus, and how does it do it? My point is if I'm gonna spend extra money and I'm willing to spend the extra money, I want a food that's actually gonna deliver the best health uh, that my animal can can take advantage of and also helps reduce the risk of those those dreaded diseases that I hear about all the time and I don't want to have my cat go through that can the food deliver that can the food actually do that for me so let's just talk about feline health just for a little bit here because diet uh, is really an important part of this. So one is, again, I've already said these cats, 
thankfully they're living older, they're living into their golden years. Uh, cats are, are pushing the late teens now. And uh, with that, usually just like with people, the risk of certain age-related diseases becomes more prevalent. And kidney disease is definitely one of those top ones. Um, it's uh, one of the, it's kind of a sneaky, insidious disease because it sneaks up on you. Uh, the kidneys are so well designed, you know, the cat has two of them, as you know, and um, they work so well that in kidney diseases, the uh, filtering is deteriorating and the function is going down. Um, they'll work so well that a vet, your veterinarian won't see uh, blood work or, or clinical signs till sometimes two thirds up to three quarters of those kidneys are gone. So that's one reason why your veterinarian is always telling you, especially with cats that are older, get blood work every year because then we'll be able to catch it much earlier than. And, and, uh, and one thing about uh, kidney disease, the earlier you catch it, the better as far as having good results of managing it. So um, that's why if, you're, if your veterinarian's harping on you to get the blood work done and your cat is over seven, eight years of age, there's a real good reason why he's doing that or she is doing that. Okay, but that's kidney disease. The other is urinary health. Uh, you've heard it called bladder stones or that, that bladder condition that people kind of, or the stone issue. People have different ways of describing it. But basically what it is, is that this is a cat that is prone to crystals forming in their urine and those crystals clump up, turn into stones and could even cause a blockage, which is an emergency situation. So uh, urinary health is a big deal with cats. So here's the big question. What food company or what diets can actually help my cat stay healthy, reduce the risk of those stones, that, that urinary issue, reduce the risk of them coming down with uh, renal disease later on in life? Um, is there something we can do nutritionally for those cats? And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So I watch all the videos on YouTube and I read all the threads about what the comments of people and different diets and one really popular one is definitely origin, both dog food and cat food. So I thought, well, fine, let's go with that. Uh, so I did pick this origin original cat food. Now this is dry. I will do a, a, a comparison on canned and I will admit that I am definitely uh, convinced as most veterinarians are and most cat folks are that canned is definitely the way to go versus dry. The only reason I do this is because there's still plenty of cat folks out there that will put dry down all day and maybe feed canned at night, whatever. So, uh, and I'm not saying dry is bad. Um, that's a whole nother discussion, but um, I figured we'll do a dry comparison and then we'll do a can comparison. And uh, so we'll do the dry first, only because probably, again, most cat owners out there, even though definitely the the shift of thinking, the paradigm shift is definitely that we should be feeding more canned than dry. And I'm, and I'm in that camp now as well. I think most veterinarians are. But let's look at dry because again, people are feeding it. So we have this dry. We'll go ahead and take a look at the nutrient pro profile of that food. So let's take a look at the actual nutrients in the food. I did call Origin to get their actual amounts. I'm not interested in the guaranteed analysis on the bag because that is just minimums and maximums. That's really not giving me any real information. If you really want real information on a food company, you have to call them and get that information. And uh, thankfully they had all the numbers. They were actually very helpful. So that was, I, I really appreciated that. So the protein level is 9.8 grams. 100 kcals and basically think of it as a per calorie basis how much protein how much calcium uh, I've, I've mentioned this before in the last video so um, so basically the the protein comes in at 9.8 for a cat food we want high protein cats are what they're obligate uh, carnivores so clearly uh, protein and meat protein is important to them right all the amino acids that a cat needs have to be in the diet <clears throat> now, calcium and phosphorus, they're very important. You'll always see them mentioned together because they act on each other. A uh, very important element of the diet, even though it's not as glamorous as protein and fat and things like that. But we have calcium coming in at 362 milligrams. Again, this is per 100 kcals, in case you're really into this stuff. So 362, and the phosphorus is 294. 
Uh, calcium and phosphorus, they're important here because again, cats being prone to issues like stones, like kidney disease, these minerals do affect those conditions. So we really wanna be aware of them, not so much as in, in uh, while they're kittens, but once they become adults and start aging a little bit, that's when we wanna really uh, control any excesses of those two minerals. The next is sodium. Sodium uh, affects kidney disease. It can affect hypertension. Again, a lot of this is genetic. If the cat is prone to it, that's when these excesses could hurt them. Just like with people, as you get eight, older, you have to watch your sodium level. You didn't have to when you were 20, but you sure do when now in your 60s, okay? <laughs> Blood pressure, things like that. So uh, the sodium comes in at uh, uh, 97 97 milligrams, okay? And I know these numbers mean nothing to you right now, but I'll, I'll make it make sense in a second here. The uh, magnesium level, that's another mineral. And the reason I'm mentioning calcium, phosphorus, and sodium, because guess what? When we look at the crystals and the stones that cats get, there's really two main kinds. These are three of the main culprits right here, the minerals that those stones are made of. So that's why I'm mentioning them now, how important they are. Uh, again, 19 milligrams of magnesium per 100 kcal. And um, the last uh, that I, I wanted to look up, and I guess I should put this back with the protein, you guys probably know this as cat people, taurine is an amino acid. Now protein is what? It's all the amino acids, right? Those essential amino acids. Taurine is one that cats need in their diet. Now it, it proves they're carnivores because where do we find taurine? Only in meat protein, not in plant protein. Um, Dogs and people, we can take the other amino acids and produce our own taurine level. Guess who can't? Cats. Another reason to prove they are true carnivores. It has to be added to their diet. And since the, I would say the 70s, when there was a big scare about cardiomyopathy uh, with cats, we realized taurine levels really needed to be supplemented, not just using meat alone. And that's why now food companies will supplement taurine to get that amino acid up because you you don't want to have a deficiency in taurine. So right now, happily, we can say there is no deficiencies of taurine out there. And their taurine level uh, for that, um, that diet comes in at uh, 39 milligrams of taurine. All right. So now what do all these numbers mean? The point is you're looking at these numbers. You have to compare them to something else to, to understand, are these good numbers or not? Is this food company proactively trying to maintain health with my cat and especially as she gets older, reduce the risk of disease? That's my question. I am willing to spend extra money for that. Okay, so here's another food I want to show you. Uh, this is Science Diet and this is Feline Adult for adult cats and it comes from Hills Pet Nutrition. And um, I think what I will do is show you the nutrient levels first here, since that's how we did the last one. So here's the nutrient levels of the science diet. And you'll notice that the uh, protein, the grams per 100 kcal is eight grams. And the calcium is 198 milligrams. The phosphorus is 175 milligrams sodium at 96 milligrams uh, the magnesium level is 21 milligrams and the taurine that amino acid we talked about is at 48 uh, milligrams so uh lots of numbers i'm throwing them at you still you're like okay that's uh that's not how i normally compare food i know you compare food by looking at ingredient panels so let's do that let's look at the ingredient panel of the science diet and there you go, it's up there. And um, there's probably things in that like, ooh, I'm not sure, especially, uh, ooh, corn gluten meal. That's just, why is that? Cats are carnivores, why is that in this diet? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it makes perfect sense if you're a company that is uh, designed or, or a company whose philosophy is using nutrients to reduce the risk of disease. Uh, especially from a company like Hills that actually has been managing <clears throat> various diseases uh, for literally, well, half a century now uh, or more. Um, so let's take a look at the nutrient levels of both those diets. I'll put them up here and you'll notice there's some differences here. Uh, the protein is a little uh, lower in the science diet, but they're still both high protein diets because that's what cats need. So there's no issue there. 
But look at the calcium and phosphorus levels and you'll notice in the science diet, it's basically half. It's about half the amount. Now, there's no deficiencies here. The board certified nutritionists at Hills know how much calcium and phosphorus there should be, but they take the extra step to say, hey, let's make sure we're restricting it or controlling it, whichever word you wanna use, that there's no excesses here. Why? Because of all the issues that I talked about uh, ad nauseum before, the risk of kidney disease, the risk of crystals and stones. So that's why they're keeping those mineral levels controlled the way they are. And no company does it better. When you look at calcium and phosphorus levels, you'll see Hills is probably going to be the most restricted, which is very expensive to do, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, let's look at sodium levels. The sodium levels are basically the same, so that's good. There's no excessive sodium here. Uh, the magnesium levels are basically the same. Uh, that's that's real good because, again, uh, I guess I should have said there's, there's four minerals on here that can cause stones or, or be the culprit for stones, and magnesium is definitely one of them. But both food companies have done a great job with that. And then lastly, uh, taurine. Uh, the taurine level is actually uh, a bit higher in the hills, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm confident that the 39 milligrams in the origin is not deficient, so that's fine. What I want to point out here, though, which is really important, is notice these are high-protein diets. So the, the challenge, the cost, is keeping that phosphorus level down because the meat source is where you're gonna get the phosphorus from. So when you find both foods are basically around the same as far as total protein, but we find the phosphorus level so much lower in the science diet. Why is that? Again, it's on purpose to reduce the risk of stones, reduce the risk of early kidney disease in these cats, because again, you're not gonna know what's going on in those cats kidneys so doesn't it make sense let's keep those levels at optimal safe levels not extreme levels uh, that could be causing damage and then finally when the cat is 10 years old she's in full-blown renal failure so that's the thinking behind controlling those minerals that nobody looks at nobody looks at that I don't see that anywhere and that especially for a cat especially for a cat parent that's what you should be looking at because crystal urea or, or, or crystals in the, the urine and stones and kidney disease, they're, they're out there, there's so much of it, and we can help reduce the risk and, and manage it by controlling these minerals, but they're not glamorous. And as a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. You saw a corn gluten meal on that list uh, in the science diet. Well, cats are carnivores, look at the, the cat in the wild, they're eating prey, they're not eating corn on the cob, whatever. Well, the corn gluten meal, the gluten part should give you a hint, that's actually a protein source. That's taking the little heart inside that uh, corn kernel and making a meal out of that. So it's a protein source, it's not a carbohydrate like ground corn. It's actually very high in bioavailability of protein, certain amino acids. So when you add corn or corn gluten meal, to the chicken, guess what? You get a better amino acid profile, which is what this cat as a carnivore needs, but what have we done? Effectively, we've reduced the phosphorus. If you just need use meat, all those meat sources you saw in that origin, they're all great sources, but as that cat ages, guess what? With all that protein, you're getting all the phosphorus. You're getting 294 milligrams of phosphorus every day going into that cat versus 175 in the science diet. So the philosophy is very different. That's why when you look at an ingredient panel and you see an ingredient like corn gluten meal, oh, that's a cheap food. I see it all the time on these videos. No, it's not a cheap food. It's in there on purpose because here's a company can, that is saying it's the nutrients that are delivered to your cat that matters, not the glamorous ingredients. But nobody looks at nutrients anymore because the marketing people have trained you so well to just look at ingredients. And there's a couple of things I forgot to mention. If you looked at that nutrient uh, comparison, you'll notice that the origin Folks, we're not able to tell me a uh, targeted urine pH. Uh, that's not something they do with their diet. With Hills, with the science diet, you saw that the urine pH was managed at 6.2 to 6.4. It's one of the few, I think it's actually the only company that manages that urine pH specifically, just uh, mildly acidic. And what that does, it helps prohibit the form, forming of those crystals or stones because it allows the urine to be an environment that 
those stones uh, just don't easily form in. So that's another benefit that you're getting in the science diet that you're not getting in origin. And hey, here's another, another good example of the difference. Look at the, the AFCO feeding uh, guidelines for the uh, origin and you'll see that it says it's formulated for what? For all life stages. All life stages means all, okay? That includes kittenhood. So I want you to imagine uh, Dr. Ray, a veterinarian that has a great channel, you should go check her out, uh, Dr. Ray. I think that's how her channel starts. But uh, she, the other day, said something on one of her videos. Imagine that first year of life, that little tiny kitten grows into that full-grown cat. Uh, that's the nutrition that you're offering your adult cat when you feed a food that says all life stage. Think about the nutrients and the high levels of nutrients going into growing that kitten into a cat. You're turning around and feeding that food, and the origin may say adult cat, but it is, it is high enough in nutrients for all life stages. So you're basically feeding the kitten food. That is not helping reduce the risk of obesity. It's not helping reduce the risk of urinary stones. It's not helping reduce the risk of kidney disease. That's what you get from optimal nutrients levels that you get from a company that is truly doing nutrition science and not just giving you a glamorous ingredient panel. And this is the stuff that makes me nuts, okay? Here's, here's my nutty face. Um, you're gonna pay $2.30 more a pound for Origin for a, an attractive ingredient panel that appeals to you, $2.30 more than a diet that is actually trying to help prevent the risk of disease and to keep your pet or your, your cat healthy. It's, it's your money. So I hope that makes sense. And when you look at this, I, I left this up here, the comparison, this is what people should be looking at. This is what pet parents should be looking at. Show me the nutrients of your food to see if it's healthy for my animal and if you're actually putting the money in. Before I finish, because this is why I get on a tangent, why is the phosphorus so high? Are they doing that on purpose? Not at all. Food companies know you're not looking at phosphorus levels, so they can use meat sources that have bone, hair, hoof, feathers, chicken lips, whatever, I don't know, foreign stuff in there. It doesn't show up on the ingredient panel, but guess what? You can't hide it. That junk will show up as calcium and phosphorus. So when you go and you check out some of the foods you're feeding now and you find the calcium and phosphorus levels are really high, I don't care what that ingredient panel says, they're feeding you junk. Okay, and the, and the nutrient levels, the, the mineral levels prove it. So that's why you have to be looking at nutrients, especially for cats, because they, they are so prone to excesses causing issues. I, I hope that helps you understand how nutritionists look at cat foods versus the way pet food marketers market cat food to you. Please, you should have some questions about this. I'd love to answer them. Put them in the, the comments, hit the subscription thing, do all that good stuff. And uh, again, for you cat parents, I hope this has been helpful.